What's up you guys? It's Zamora and today I wanted to talk about the different ways that I handle rejection. I know that I have been missing in action for a little bit but I have been a little busy and honestly I had lost my touch and I guess my mood or inspiration to make videos despite having my material ready. But at any rate, let's dive into this topic because it's one that to this day I um, sometimes struggle with and hopefully by creating this video and putting it out there and eventually hearing what you guys have to say will shed some light into ways that I can even improve my own method. So there are different kinds of rejection and I will signal which one I am referring to. And the first one I want to talk about is a job rejection because that's the one that I experienced recently. Um, and what I have to say about it is that I look at it as an opportunity to grow where you are at. What I mean by that is you may be in a certain company and you may feel comfortable to take the next step and add more responsibilities to your table and whatever but sometimes the individual who decides whether to proceed with you or not may see some things about you that you honestly admit that they're right like for me in my case it was that they believed that taking this next job would overwhelm me and that is true. I've expressed to you guys about how easily I get stressed out sometimes. And in my wish to want to get everything done and for everything to be perfect, that's where the overwhelming part may arrive because I'm there thinking, wow, I have a lot going on and only myself to rely on. And it's not a question of can I do it. It's just that I may not be entirely ready possessing the proper knowledge and even experience in some situations to have this position as my primary responsibility. So nothing healthier than having someone be completely honest with you but also you admitting that this person is right and that that's really the way that things should be for your sake. Um, additionally, if you get rejected to have a job altogether, like if you go in for a different position, it's not applicable for you. The way I would deal with this rejection is uh, just motivate myself to find something better. Now, I say that without any experience. The job I applied for um, that I cared the most of was the one that I got called for first and the one that I had the interview for and the one I got hired at. So, but knowing myself, I know that if I would have gotten rejected to the job that I was really hoping for, I would be like, you know what? If I'm getting rejected, it's because they either don't need someone like me or I just don't deserve to be there, but not because I'm no good, because I just deserve better. And I have learned to accept that, that it is true. I mean, some things are not meant for you and it's not because you personally are bad. It's because don't settle for less than what you deserve. Even if you're desperate about bringing home some money, shoot for what your abilities and knowledge and capability allows you to go. That's what I did and I have been pretty happy ever since. However, now that my life circumstances are changing and I also have some goals that I would like to accomplish and they demand a little more from me, that's the reason I was taking this step. But the fact that I didn't make it doesn't mean that I am thinking of myself that I'm a failure and that I have just cried. I haven't even shed a tear. As a matter of fact, when I submitted that application to be considered for this position, I was done with it and I was relaxed. I 
would think about it maybe once or twice a day, the fact that I applied and it was so that I reviewed stuff in my mind so that I don't go to a potential interview blank. So, you know, um, additionally, if the job was the job that you wanted, consider the location. Maybe you should move. For me, three years ago, I was in a different state. Um, and I knew that that wasn't the place for me, but I needed a source of income to um, respond to some bills that I had going on. But I knew that my goal was to return to my current state of residence. And I ended up in the best residence that I ever could have imagined. Like this is way better than the two preceding CDs that I had been at. So yeah, it, I probably deserve this and I got it. Um, also, this may sound a little cliche, I guess, but maybe, just maybe, um, it could be that you get rejected because if there truly is like a superior force out there that places its pieces where it needs to go, it means that the best is yet to come for you. And you shouldn't um, invest yourself too much so that you can respond to it. And this one partly applies to me. Had I gotten the position that I went for, I probably wouldn't have had the time to try doing some things on the side that interest me, but that have random schedules and that would have affected me. So I feel like I wasn't meant to have this position just yet. Um, and you know, just don't think negatively of it. Just be grateful that you went through the application process and someone talked to you and they were sincere, nothing political, and boom. All right, now let's talk about rejections that you encounter from your peers. Um, the way I like to think about it is why you shouldn't hang out with a particular crowd. Like in the past, I have gotten rejected to go somewhere, to go on some kind of trip, or to be an active person participant of a project of some or something that demanded my interest and all I did was I was like you know what maybe thinking about it better the way that you people manifest would conflict with myself so I think I should just set that aside and I believe that's why I have been so peaceful and tranquil all this time and I don't feel like wow I messed up I missed out on the opportunity of a lifetime because I honestly do not feel that way. Um, also, why are you being rejected? Sometimes, even though you shouldn't try to know the reason or have an explanation for everything, sometimes it's important for you to ask yourself, why did this person reject me? And then think about the kind of person that you are. Um, for instance, for me, I guess I would be rejected because I tend to be in the quiet side unless I'm comfortable enough with you or you know me well enough or maybe what the activity is requires abilities that I simply don't possess and they may be considerate trying to save me from a disappointing experience even though the way I operate is I like to expose myself to the things that I am ignorant so that I learn and thus become better. But you know, sometimes um, people may make decisions and it has absolutely nothing to do with you. It could be a number of other things, but a lot of times they make the right call and you should just respect it. Um, and then if you're different or just, yeah, different, unlike the rest, then don't let that get to you. It just means that at that particular moment, that particular time, for that particular instance, you're just not meant to be there. And it probably means that you're doing something right if you're rejected for how you are sometimes. Because for me, when I was in school, I would get rejected to play certain games because when I look at the crowd back then and how they are now, I'm like, yeah, 
um, you know, I was typically that one peaceful student who would get things done. Other people had a different agenda. So at any rate, let's talk about one of my least favorite rejections because this one tends to impact me a lot mentally because there's really not much that you can do about it. Um, and unlike jobs where you can obtain more skills to become more qualified and unlike peers where you can talk to them or just completely walk out on them because they have no major role in your life. This one's a little different and these ones are relationship rejections. Um, for instance, something that you should ask yourself is, as a female, I'll talk from a female point of view, is was the guy really that good for you? And for me personally, I'm having this conflict because um, I see some awesome qualities, but I have also found myself suffering and being more sad than I deserve. As a matter of fact, I don't think I deserve any of this, but I just refuse to let go because I feel like I haven't done enough or all that I can to make things get to where I wish they would get. Um, but sometimes what gives me the biggest insecurity is when I confront the individual involved and they pick the worst attitude or they seem unwilling to even try to determine that about themselves and thus share that information with me. They like to look at it as I'm just being persistent and a bug and desperate and all that. And I'm like, you just need to understand that I have some dreams and goals of my own. And they involve um, having a steady home that I can come back to and all that you know if i if the sole fact that i'm thinking about the person involved makes me sad something needs to be fixed and when i open my mouth and communicate something that's my goal and nothing else fixing things not trying to walk out or give up on it or start something new fix it that's all i do so at any rate another point is that nothing serious was taking place like that's probably the worst rejection and i myself am guilty of having done that to someone and i guess in a sense what's happening to me now is a form of karma but i don't like to put it that way too much because how did i know that of all the millions of potential partners that I could have had, I had to choose the one that was going to put me into this dilemma and given my, my principles and the way that I am, which is I just don't like to be involved on a personal level with a lot of people, then I had no idea that um, this one person was going to be like almost a nightmare type of thing because all of the things that come into conflict for me would find themselves this time. So even though most people would be like, ah, you're young and you have time to decide on all that, it's not a matter about being young. I'm not afraid of what time is doing. The only thing that would make me mad is if this person already knows that they are not serious and they're just choosing to not tell me and I discover that I waste my time. When I discover that I have wasted my time, that's when I get angry. But, but I just, I'm not the kind of person to just give up. And when I find something that looks remotely like what I'm looking for, I just dive into it. No. And I have been stuck this way for a couple of years now. So I'm not going to let everything that I have constructed just go down, you know. And then on that same note, but in a different um, perspective, I guess, when you are rejected in a relationship from the physical aspect, um, like think that if you want the best might happen, um, or sorry, I meant to say, think of it as if you wait the best might happen 
Um, don't wait too insanely long though. And the reason I say that part is because of the part that I say about I get mad when I discover I've wasted my time. I get rejected physically every day. Like my affection is not welcome. My needs and impulses are not answered. And I have just learned to see other things that can have the equal effect and importance and just value them a little better. It's difficult, but at least, um, at least it also teaches me to be mentally more strong. I'll still make my attempts to get what I desire, um, but at least I haven't gotten to the point where I have become aggressive about it. I have had the impulse to, but I do that when I go home. That's when I get annoyed and outraged and maybe even cry. Whatever type of emotion I need to display about this happens. Um, also, this one's kind of difficult, but something that I find myself doing is that I remember that someone out there would really want me and finds me desirable um, and that helps because it assures me that my essence is not going down. My desirable essence is not going down. And the only reason this is a conflict is because this makes me feel like I could potentially be someone who like strays away. But I know myself, I know my my like virtues and just I'm too much of a person of honor to fall victim to that um like emotionally I may be as needy as I can be um I can be as lonely as I can be physically I may have as many desires as I can have but I'm never going to like for a couple of minutes or hours of um I guess let's call it pleasure to sum it all up. I'm not going to like destroy everything that I have built because it not only destroys what you have right now, it destroys you for your future because you'll have a history of being that way and you just cannot be trusted. I wouldn't trust someone who I know has a record of not being a person of full integrity. Why would I do that? You know? So anyways, um, that's about all that I have in that department. And then finally, rejections from your family. This is a tough one because when I was growing up, I experienced this a lot, but I'm going to just break it down into two parts. And the first one would be that what helps me get over this is the fact that the best family I have had have not even been linked by blood. So this may generate a lot of controversy this may not, but for me, um, my blood family hasn't done much, nor have they tried to do much for me. So it could be different if I were actively looking for them, but at the same time, I feel like that defeats the purpose because I'm like, clearly I haven't needed you and you haven't needed me. So let's face it. And... Uh, even if I were involved with them, that doesn't guarantee that they would be as nice to me as I deserve. I would be nice to them. I'm nice to everybody. There are some people who I'm extra nice to because I feel a certain way about them. Um, which, that brings me briefly back to the relationship aspect. How have I tolerated so much disrespect and abuse and all that from someone because love is just like that. It's crazy. It's stupid. It's ridiculous. It makes you, um, it just, it, it makes you insane. It makes you have no sense. And, you know, because for me, I'm quick to get rid of anything that's not making me happy. But in this case, it's really complicated. And I don't like to accept the stuff that people say about sometimes it's not meant to work out. Well, if it's not meant to work out, I want a reason why. I want for it to be either I'm not doing enough or he's not doing enough or we have, I don't know, we just conflict so much that we even have physical altercations or it has to be something absolutely extreme. It cannot just be 
a matter of, oh, two different mentalities, two different people with different goals. Because I have met individuals who are the most unlikely of couples and they have made it. Why can I not make it if my situation is not any different? So at any rate, and then finally, the last thing that I really would like to say is that only worry about those who have worried about you before. And by worry, I mean those who have truly lent their hands to you, expected nothing in return, and you did the very same for them and expected nothing in return. And all right, you guys, this was quite a difficult video to make. Um, it may not seem like it. I'm just sitting here and I'm just talking everything that comes to mind. I just put it out there. But the reason it was difficult is because normally this is something that I never express. Not a lot of people know this about me or not a lot of people know that I have these struggles. And the fact that I'm starting to accept it and semi-embrace it. And I say semi because I want to get rid of this. Um, and just, I find myself that every time I say something, create a video, even if it doesn't get that many views, it's like I'm giving the troubles to the camera. I'm giving the troubles to the internet. I'm able to let go of it. I used to journal, but for some reason, it didn't have the same effect as creating a video because this is like exactly the same way that I look and sound right now. That's how I would write minus my image and picture. So for some reason, doing this has been very magical to me. So anybody who needs help and you need a way to save some medical money, I guess, this is the way to fire your therapist. And all right, you guys, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. I value your presence a lot, and I hope that I demonstrate that enough. And if not enough right now, someday. And all right, you guys, I'll see you soon.